I can check my schedule and join my next meeting, control my music and even choose where it plays, and run everything in my smart home all without ever leaving this free spotlight replacement called Raycast. But that's just the beginning because there's a huge amount of extensions that you can install with just a single click. And what's wild is that a lot of the best stuff comes built in. You don't even need to install anything. Like a built-in clipboard manager that saves everything you copy to your clipboard like text, links, files, images, and even videos. And if you remember even a single word, Raycast finds it instantly, even text inside images. And you can then press enter to paste it. And for those things that you're always going back to copy and paste, you can turn those into snippets, which is Raycast's built-in text replacement tool. Just give it a name, type the content, and set a keyword to trigger it. And now, no matter where you are on your Mac, just type that keyword and it expands instantly. And if you want to get fancy, you can even add placeholders like the date, time, or custom fields that ask you for your input before pasting the full message, which is really handy to reply to emails. And you can manage all of these from the snippets page inside Raycast. But if you want to launch this or really anything in Raycast faster, then you've got two options. You can either assign an alias, which is basically a shortcut word that tells Raycast what you're looking for, or, and this is where it gets really powerful, you can assign a keyboard shortcut to it, which bypasses the command bar altogether. And by the way, you can do this for any command which is especially useful for window management so you can move and resize windows faster. There's a ton of options here, but my most used ones are snap left, snap right, maximize, and making it larger or smaller. And if you're wondering what the hell this diamond icon is, that's a hyper key, which is when you take a key like caps lock and turn it into a kind of universal shortcut key. Behind the scenes, it acts like pressing command, option, control, and shift all at once. But all you do is hit the caps lock key. And this combo is so rare that it's not gonna conflict with any other shortcut. And normally you'd need a separate app to set this up, but we can do this right from Raycast under advanced hyper key. But one of my favorite features in Raycast is the calculator, because this thing does everything. Percentages, dates, time zones, currency, even unit conversions. Super useful. Raycast also pulls in your calendar and lets you glance at it by using the my schedule command, which I also have mapped to a hotkey. And what's cool is if a meeting has a link, you can just hit enter and it joins it instantly. And if you've used Notion, Obsidian, or VS Code, you know that those apps have a command palette that gives you quick access to pretty much everything the app can do. And Raycast brings that to any app using the search menu items command. And what's happening under the hood here is that it's pulling in all the actions from the menu bar into a command palette that you can search. This is especially useful in apps like Photoshop that have a million settings that you can't easily access. And yep, this is also mapped to a hotkey. And this is yet another app that Raycast replaces, and we're still only on the native features. We haven't even touched third-party extensions yet. And you know when you're digging through a pile of screenshots trying to find the right one? With Raycast, if you remember even a single word inside the screenshot, you can search it using the search screenshots command and it'll find it. Okay, so now I'm gonna rapid fire through a couple more native features before going into third-party extensions. First is the emoji picker, and this not only looks great, but it also includes a bunch of extra symbols like keyboard keys, arrows, and currency icons. There's also a built-in color picker. Just trigger it, click anywhere on the screen, and it's gonna give you the hex code. They also have this feature called quick links, which lets you create shortcuts to pretty much anything. Folders, files, apps, even websites. I mostly use it to jump straight into deep folders, but there's a lot more that you can do with it. And last but not least, there's a built-in Pomodoro timer called Raycast Focus that also blocks apps or websites while you work. And when the time's up, you get a chime and a really clean little animation. All right, so now let's get into the third-party extensions that I use. The first one is the Apple Notes extension, and the standout feature here is how fast I can pull up my notes. I have the letter N as an alias for it, so I just type N, press space, and start searching. I also use similar extensions for Obsidian and even for Google Drive. I just type my alias for those and start searching right away. And if you use something like Notion or Bear, there are extensions for those as well. There's also an extension for almost all password managers. I use one password and I pull up my login straight from Raycast every day. And by the way, if you press Command K on this or on any other item in Raycast, it's going to show you a bunch of actions that you can do with it. And speaking of passwords, if you use two-factor codes, you can grab those straight from Raycast 
Raycast as well using the 2FA extension. And this works both for messages and email. And you don't even have to copy, just press enter and it automatically pastes it. I also use a few extensions for calendar and meetings. One of them starts a Google Meet instantly and copies the link to my clipboard. If you use Zoom or Teams, there are extensions for those as well. Another lets me easily create calendar events using natural language. And another shows me the time zones of family and colleagues. Raycast also replaces a bunch of those tiny utility apps that I used to keep around. Like this one that lets me switch my audio input and output. Or this one that lets me manage my Bluetooth devices and it even shows battery levels for Apple products. There's also an extension that lets you uninstall any app straight from Raycast. And the best part is that you can pick the uninstaller you want. I use App Cleaner, it's what I've used for years and now I can do it straight from Raycast. And there's also little stuff too like this one that keeps my Mac awake or this one that opens my last downloaded file. But Raycast doesn't just replace apps, it makes the ones you already use way better. Like this Spotify extension that lets you control your music, start songs or playlists and run a ton of other commands. I also use Cleanshot X, which if you don't know, it's by far the best screenshot tool out there and Raycast makes it even better. There's a ton of commands you can do with it, but the two I use the most is Open History and Restore Recently Closed. Very nice. I also use Parcel, which tracks my deliveries and Flighty for my flights, and I can access both straight from Raycast. Basically, if there's an app you use all the time, there's probably a Raycast extension for it. But one of my favorite extensions is the Home Assistant one, which lets you control every smart home device in your home straight from Raycast. This one is far too long to go into detail here, but I did send out a newsletter a couple days ago talking specifically about this. If you want to check that out, the link is down there in the description. And speaking of well-designed tools, you might want to check out today's sponsor, Opera, because they've just revamped their browser and packed it with a ton of useful features like a built-in music player that works with all the major streaming services and lets you control your music without interrupting your work. And you can even detach it and move it anywhere. It has tab islands which lets you group related tabs like shopping or travel and expand or collapse them to keep things tidy. They also added these underlines here called tab traces which help you find your most recently visited tabs amongst all the clutter. The darker the underscore, the more recently you've been on a tab. It's got a split screen mode too, just drag a tab down to view two pages side by side. And there are even a bunch of themes like Midsommar or my favorite Aurora that change the look and sound of your browser. It even has a built-in AI called Aria. Simply press command or control plus forward slash and ask questions in the command line, generate images or even upload an image to get more info about it. Check out Opera for free using my link in the description. Okay, so everything we've gone over so far is 100% free, but there's also two paid plans. And this is where things get a little weird. The first one is called Raycast Pro and it gives you a few extra features. One of which is Cloud Sync. So your settings, extensions, snippets and everything else with some exceptions stays in sync across all your Macs. You can still do this manually on the free plan by exporting your settings from Raycast on one Mac and importing them into Raycast on another. But with the Pro plan, this happens automatically. You also get a built-in translator, which is nice, but you can also just get the Google Translate extension. Clipboard history also goes from being capped at three months to unlimited. And this one actually hurts a little because your clipboard history is stored locally. So there's really no reason for this to be a paid feature. Not to mention it used to be unlimited until they introduced the Pro plan. You also get full window management capabilities, unlimited Raycast notes, and the ability to choose themes. But the main selling point seems to be AI. This includes not just chatting with different language models, but also using AI powered commands inside some extensions. You can see which ones support this by going to the extensions page and looking for commands labeled AI extensions. And to show you this in action, I can ask my calendar when is my next video going live and it should answer correctly. Or I can tell Notion to add something to a database straight from Raycast. I'll admit this is actually really cool and probably useful for a lot of people, just not really for me. And if you want to take it even further, there's a higher tier called Raycast Pro plus Advanced AI. And the only difference here is that this one gives you access to more powerful language models across the board. And I know at first glance, this looks like a way better deal than paying for ChatGPT Plus or Google Gemini. You're getting access to pretty much every major language model for less than what you'd pay for a single one. But it's not that simple. With ChatGPT Plus, you get a lot of important features that you're not going to 
I get with Raycast. The most important one for me is persistent chat history. This lets me stick with the same project over time and pick up where I left off. Using it on Raycast is fast and it's deeply integrated with the Mac, but unless I'm missing something, it seems to be built for quick one-off tasks. So for me, this isn't even close to a replacement. But if you're okay with that, then Raycast Pro might be worth it just for this. That's a lot you get for $8 a month, plus you're supporting the continued development of what's genuinely one of the best tools on the Mac. But the thing is, I only started using Raycast earlier this year. Before that, I was using Alfred and I used it for around 10 years. And there were a few things that finally pushed me over. The first is that Raycast is under constant development. There's always new features coming out, which makes sense because Alfred is maintained by just a couple of people, while Raycast has a pretty big team and it's VC funded. This also explains why the free version of Raycast is so generous. You get a ton out of the box, way more than Alfred. Shit, I think you get more out of the free version of Raycast than you do from the paid version of Alfred, which by the way is a one-time payment of around $40. But at the same time, it's that VC back growth mindset that has a lot of people worried about what could happen down the line. And I'll come back to this in a minute. Raycast also looks and feels like an app from 2025. Everything from navigating the settings to managing extensions is super clean and modern. Meanwhile, Alfred hasn't changed much from what it looked like 10 years ago. And then there's the built-in store, which is a huge win for Raycast. With Alfred, you have to either dig through their gallery or download random workflows from GitHub. Not to mention the extension community is way more active on Raycast with new extensions popping up all the time. Okay, so now here's where Alfred still wins, starting with speed. Alfred is just faster, there's no debate about this. Most actions take one less step, if not more, compared to Raycast. If you want to search for a file in Raycast, you launch it, type search files, hit enter, and then you can start searching. That's three steps. And even if you assign an alias like SF to get there faster, it's still three steps. With Alfred, you launch it, press space, and that's it. Same with extensions. In Alfred, you type 2FA and your code is right there. In Raycast, you always have to select the extension first before anything else happens. Everything is always behind the menu. So unless you're willing to create a shortcut for everything you want to do with Raycast, Alfred will always be a couple seconds faster. And if you use this 100 times a day, those extra steps start to matter. The next big one is cloud syncing. With Alfred, this is completely free. You just drop your settings folder into iCloud or Dropbox and it's going to sync across all your Macs. Raycast makes you pay for that. If you want to sync your settings the easy way without manually exporting and importing between Macs, you'll need the Pro plan. And this leads me to my next point, which is privacy. Because when you use their Pro plan, it syncs your data through their servers. That includes your settings, snippets, notes, and a bunch of other things. It's not shady and they're transparent about it, but it does mean that more of your data flows through them. Alfred, on the other hand, is offline first. It stores everything locally and only pings their servers to activate the license key. And lastly, Alfred has been around for 15 years. They're not going anywhere. They've had the same sustainable business model for years and it works. As much as I like Raycast, we don't know what the future holds and we could very well see some form of insurification. They already placed the cap on clipboard history from unlimited to three months. And this is really just a cash grab as your clipboard is stored locally and doesn't sync with their servers. What if next it'll be a cap on how many snippets you can have or how many extensions you can install? These are things that just won't happen with Alfred. But even after all of that, I still think that Raycast is the better option. I don't love that it's VC funded, but that's just the nature of things. The truth is that right now, this is the better product. Its free version is insanely good. It comes with amazing built-in features and the third-party extensions work really well and are very stable. It also keeps getting better every week and they actually listen to the community, which really matters. It's not perfect and yeah, when I first switched, taking that extra step for everything was annoying, but I got used to it and in return, I get a lot more out of it than I did with Alfred. Raycast replaces a ton of apps, but definitely not all of them. And if you want to check out the other Mac apps that I still rely on, then watch this video here and I'll see you there.